Namaste friends, I am Ritesh and I am Ritika and today we are focusing specially on neck alignment and the asana is Bhujangasana. So I will ask Ritika to lie down on the abdomen also known as a prone position. Okay friends, whenever you are focusing on Bhujangasana, the four most important thing is the positioning of your neck. So two things are very important. First is the blood circulation throughout the neck and the second is the bone, the C1 and the C2. We call that facet joints. So to what extent your facet joints are compressing because those facet joints have nerves passing from the heart and going towards the brain. So the pathway is the neck. So two things are very important before we do it. And now I will ask Ritika to start uh, in a starting position of Bhujangasana. So let's Ritika, let's get into the Bhujangasana starting position, forehead on the floor. So that is a Bhujangasana, the elbows are near to the body, the shoulders are down, the neck are long. Now due to forward head posture, your C1 and C2 was already into a extended position. And now when you lift the head up first, okay, so start lifting the head up first you already create more tension that is also known as hyperextension at the C1 and C2. So what is happening apart from the C1 and C2, you are also compressing the nerves. So not only your C1 and C2 is getting crushed, but also the muscles that extend your neck, that is the rectus major and minor and obliques capitus superior and inferior. So, once again go down slowly, relax, give some time rest. Now friends, if you see the upper cross syndrome, the upper back muscles were short and tight. But now when you lift the head up, right one more time Ritika, and now when you lift the head up, the same short muscles and the tight muscles are getting more tighter. So that is the reason we don't want that we lift the head up first because it will not only misalign the cervical spine, it will misalign the hyoid bone that we talked about in part one. Your abdominal muscles is out of alignment. The rib cage is popping out and that reason might cause you a back pain. So simply by doing a Bhujangasana, you might create a back issue. So that is the reason it is very important. Let's go down slowly, Ritika. Yeah. So that is the reason it is very important how you lift your head up. So now let's talk about the second variation. Here what I will request Ritika is to lift the head up from the chest but not the head first. So okay, so as you breathe in, she is lifting the, she is lift, she's doing the Bhujangasana, lifting the chest up. So let's lift up, inhale and you are lifting it up slowly. Shoulders down and relax, shoulders down and relax. Perfect, that's it. That's your Bhujangasana. Yeah, elbows are near to the body. If you see, the thoracic spine is in line with the cervical spine, right? Your C1 and C2 is extended, but not going hyperextended. Now, if you want to stretch the neck extensors, you can also do a gentle chin tuck. So, whenever you're doing a chin tuck, you're lengthening your cervical spine and when you do a chin tuck your hyoid bone is aligned your rib cage is aligned the core is also engaged and there is no strain on your back fine friends gently go down slowly straight alignment we are focusing once again on the same lift up straight one straight line slowly and gently slowly and gently now Apart from the neck, it is not important how much higher you lift up, but it's important that you engage the back muscles, that is your trapezius, your rhomboids. So when you take the elbows near and when you're lifting it up, you're also activating your upper back, that is your rhomboids and your trapezius. So it's very important that you engage the back muscles so your pectoral, that is your chest muscles, are also getting a wonderful stretch. So friends, once again, down slowly as you exhale, fold it on the floor. So that's your starting position. Everything is aligned, toes are pointing away, lengthening, back is active, neck is long. Okay, can you see that the neck is long? Now, the cue should be the thoracic spine should be in line with the cervical spine. 
now when you breathe in always try to see that the shoulders are relaxed okay but they are not down they are just relaxed now i'll ask ritika to once again lift up with an inhalation so maintaining that same straight line ritika is lifting up with an inhale slowly shoulders are relaxed elbows are near to the body that's it that's your bhujangasan it's not a urdhva mukha shvanasan right it's one straight line that's it right inhale but never we never want this right what's c1 c2 getting compressed unnecessary stretch on the cervical flexors that we don't require right so always try to keep it straight and friends you will feel it your breathing your prana energy everything you will feel if it's straight if it is hyper extended you'll find a lot of compression on your c1 and c2 that is your atlas and axis that is we don't require okay so going down slowly and let it go down gently right relax in shavasana so that is the way you are doing bhujangasana very slowly and gently and always listen to your body whenever you are doing a hyper extension the body will let you know the breath will let you know whether it's going right or wrong okay friends that was a bhujangasana keep practicing and get your answers on your own it's not important that whatever i say you should agree to it but in the same way you try to practice bhujangasana and let me know your uh, feedback about bhujangasana okay friends keep practicing and let me know your suggestion and your comments thank you very much namaste